Hi guys, Ben here with the West Ham vs Liverpool preview. I'm doing this in a slightly different place because West Ham Stadium is there right behind me. Uh, I'm going to be back here tomorrow uh, for the game, of course. But uh, yeah, this is my balcony, so why not do it right in front of the London Stadium um, where I live? So yeah, <sighs> well, three win, three nil wins back to back for Liverpool. So look, we're in pretty, pretty good form, pretty good nick going into this one. Um, it's been a torrid few weeks, torrid few months, really not the best start of the season, but for West Ham it's been much worse. I mean, their you know, relegation battle, you know, a lot of their fans calling for Belichick's head, so their, their mindset is no better than ours, really. They got that good win over Spurs. I think when I recorded my uh, my uh, player ratings for Huddersfield, I think I assumed they'd already been with the Palace 2-1, but whilst I was recording, as it was so straight after the game, they actually conceded an equaliser, so but it's still very much with, with the pressure on and the injuries and the suspensions that they've got. I think Zabaleta, Reed, Cresswell, Font and Collins are all injured. So you're looking at a very makeshift back four or five, whichever they decide to do. I think back five probably is still more likely. It's what they're, what, what they're best at. Um, so look, it, it, I've, I've looked at their sort of predicted lineup. It's still not going to be easy. There's still a lot of good players there. I think Ogbonna and Declan Bryce. Probably going to play a centre back, maybe Kiate as well, if, it's, if it is a back three. And you could be looking at a Milton Fernandez at right wing back, or, or Antonio, I don't know, and uh, Masawaki playing a left wing back. It, it's not strong, but you know we're, we're missing a lot of attacking talent. No, obviously, still no Mane, no Coutinho for this one. Um, still waiting on Alana to come back. Um, so you look, our, our front three is, is not necessarily going to be the best. I think you're probably looking at Sturridge for you know, Salah, which isn't bad at all, but it's, it's you know. You do miss the pace of Sadio Mane and the and the Panache of Philip Coutinho in there. So, uh, if you look at our predicted lineup, I think Mignolet will have to come come back in goal. Um, defense isn't easy. I mean, do we go with Trent a right back and, and Gomez a centre back, or do we stick with Gomez at right back and maybe just lash Ragnar Klavan in with Lovren Stillinger? I think the latter is probably more likely. I think Gomez uh, defensively might just. I think he just deserves to keep playing a right back. I think he's been pretty good there for the last couple of months, and Klavan didn't disgrace himself. Uh, the other night, so I think that's fine. I think we'll go Gomez, Matip, Clavin, Moreno. Midfield picks itself with uh, with Van Alden injury. I think uh, you know Henderson, uh, Chan, and Milner will be the midfield three. Obviously, Emre Chan will be leaving in the summer, um, but look, he, he's, he's ours for now, and he, he played well midweek. So let's see what sort of reception he gets. Let's see how he plays uh, now that he's actually out. It seems, or uh, certainly been reported by a reputable source, that he'll be leaving in the summer, which is of course a great shame, but. I've had sort of mixed comments on, on, on the video that I did talking about that. Some people, some people just feel, you know, that there's better players out there. It's not a huge loss, so fair enough to those that think that. And uh, as I said, up front, Salah, Firmino, and Sturridge, as far as I'm concerned, will be the three with Firmino and Sturridge sort of interchanging. I think Sturridge had a world-class game. I was here last season for the four-nil. Sturridge was absolutely masterful, um, and I'd hope for a similar outcome this time. Um, and then look, Oxley Chamberlain off the bench. Uh, not a great deal of options, always injuries, but you know we should still have enough to be honest to beat to beat a West Ham side that are out of form. Um, you know they lost three 0 at Brighton here, so it's uh, it's not going to be routine. And, and, and this is just such a huge game. If we can pick up three points here, when you know with Chelsea playing United, with City playing Arsenal, we're going to be playing catch up on some of these teams. You'd expect City to see up Arsenal, so we could be level with them going into the international break. We could be level with Chelsea if United go to them and win, or if Chelsea win that, we're closing a gap on United. So we're slowly getting back into contention. Um, you know, I still I'm still not um, convinced that our season's going to be particularly great. Uh, with the injuries we're still getting, with the squad being quite thin still after we didn't have a good summer, uh, after the away form still not good, the defence is still a bit of a shambles, so I'm not getting carried away with anything, but if we can get a nice win here, it'll set us up relatively nicely going into uh, the fixtures after the international break, Southampton at home, which is, you know, of course, winnable, it will be a tough, then you've got another home game against Chelsea, then we go to Stoke, then it's Brighton, um, and it's a derby at, at Anfield, so a lot of, a lot of games, that, you know, there's no games there where you're really, really scared. Which um, look, if we, if we can get, if we can get sort of 12 points from the next six games, or maybe more than that, then look, who knows where we'll be uh, come the uh, run into Christmas. Um, and we want to still be at least in the in the race for top four. But it's all about Saturday. It's all about tomorrow. Uh, as I say, very excited to be in that stadium. Um, it's not a popular stadium among among travelling fans for some reason. I actually quite liked it last year. Uh, you, get, you get two tiers. The only bad thing is the big gap between the two tiers. There's a huge platform in between them, so you're not really all together with with the fans. But it's a relatively decent allocation. I was in the top tier last year, hoping to be in the bottom tier tomorrow. I'm not even sure where I am, but um, it's going to be a good one. And prediction-wise, 
I'm going to pick us to win, and I, you know something I might often do, but I think I have to for this one with West Ham's completed defence. I think we are going to get a couple of goals. I'd be surprised if we keep a clean sheet. You know they've, they've still got Hernandez and, and a couple of other uh, like, you know, Lanzini and a couple of, couple of other players that can cause us problems uh, the other way. So I'm probably going to go for a 3-1 to Liverpool. Um, Mohamed Salah's going to score. He always does. Let's, let's go for Daniel Sturridge to carry on his recent scoring form, and. Uh, Let's go for James Milner. I could, I, I enjoy a James Milner goal uh, after he missed that penalty the other day. He's been playing well the last two games and uh, deserves to be rewarded for that. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look out for the day trip tomorrow or Sunday, whenever I get around to uploading it, uh, after the West Ham game. And uh, enjoy the game yourselves. Leave a comment with your predictions. Subscribe if you're new. Drop a like, share the video for me, and follow my other socials too, as Ben might say, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Up the Reds. See you next time.